Welcome to Microbrew Gamers, and tonight we're doing our first vlog, episode one, and it's going to be where I just kind of talk about whatever comes to mind, um, thoughts, rants, ramblings, uh, stuff I might be working on, hobbies, just kind of a little anything and everything. Uh, maybe sometimes I'll do a beer review, maybe sometimes not. I'll still be doing, of course, obviously, my beer and game reviews. Uh, I'm just trying to branch out and try a few different things on the channel, so I'm trying to just kind of spread out and try a whole bunch of different things, see what's successful. Uh, see what people like. So uh, for tonight, I'm going to focus on something that's been all over YouTube and all over the news, and that's uh, with the controversy with the uh, demonetization, uh, Adpocalypse, and Adpocalypse 2.0 with YouTube, and the PewDiePie scandals. So I'll just be touching on some of that. My personal feelings and thoughts on this. Um, so without further ado. Uh, basically, this first adpocalypse started off when uh, advertisers, which supply all the money to YouTube, which in turn supply the money to us YouTube creators. Um, I'm too small to really make anything yet, but in, in general, YouTube creators that are trying to monetize. So, we have to please the advertisers. And uh, pretty much YouTube has been a Wild West, you know, anything goes type uh, station for a while. A little modern. They've kind of started cracking out a little bit, bit by bit, trying to kind of clean it up a little bit. Keep some lesser, you know, ideal content off. But it really came to a head when some advertisers discovered that their av their ads uh, and, and their products are being advertised on these channels, let's just say, that are extremists. You got hate groups, extremists, and terrorists like ISIS. They're monetizing their videos, and of course, these uh, companies are not happy. They got pissed, and they pulled out in droves, which really what's kicked off of this. Uh, PewDiePie gets blamed with the stunt, with the anti-Semitic stunts, which, when you really view it in its entirety and get his his idea on it and his, his, his thoughts on it, it's not a quite as bad as it seems. I mean, it, it was not executed well, so it's you know, distasteful. It's going to piss off a lot of people. And I don't... I think he could have gotten the message across differently, for sure. <laughs> But uh, he was trying to point out with that that you know that people some people actually let stuff fly online and will do anything for money and that they'll that they'll actually let certain things that are really distasteful go. And but he chose a bad execution, I think, in retrospect. Uh, obviously, the uh, the sign, the uh, death tall juice sign that he had those Indian guys hold up was a bad idea, stupid yeah, in retrospect. Um, so it, a lot of people failed to see what he was trying to say, and uh, I can see why it's it was pretty it seemed pretty bad. <clears throat> and then his excuse me, and then of course he went into the Nazi thing, which he was poking fun of that, and people basically equated that to be like especially Wall Street Journal that he's a he's a Nazi he's he's a Nazi sympathizer he's one of them. But he really was just bringing some satire and trying to bring some points to light, which, you know, some some bad points of humanity. And uh, once again, I mean, execution's uh, questionable, but he, his intent wasn't that bad. So this helped kick off and further the apocalypse, or basically where all the advertisers are pulling out of YouTube in droves, big ones. They're pulling their ads. They're pulling their support. So, of course, profits for YouTube tanked. I mean, I don't know if they really tanked, but my, I mean, they, they dropped significantly. So with the ad revenue dropping, they in turn had to make some real quick changes to try to bring them back. So in turn, that fell on us too. Basically, all of us get our paychecks from these advertisers. If they're not happy, they leave. YouTube, YouTube creators, none of us get paid. So YouTube has been changing up its guidelines, changing up its algorithms, trying to clean it up and make it squeaky clean for the advertisers, which is what they now want, this super squeaky clean family-friendly image on YouTube across the board. So, <clears throat> hence that we're getting all these weird guidelines. So it's not, in effect, truly YouTube's fault. Where it's YouTube's fault is that YouTube creators are confused. They're like, okay, uh, here's the guidelines, but I'm still getting flagged. I think I'm following them. YouTube's not really communicating the guidelines well. The changes that they expect to come, how can you make money, how can you continue to be a content creator and be successful, they're just pretty much not communicating very well, which is kind of their MO lately. So 
these content creators are getting very upset. And with, I mean, uh, understandably so. I mean, their, their profits, their money, their, their ability to pay rent and, and uh, buy food is tanking. And when suddenly you wake up and your videos are all demonetized, it's, it's disheartening. It's, it's uh, the first couple days, first like 48 hours, if you don't make your views in that, if you don't get a bunch of views right then, you're probably not going to get a lot of views. I mean, usually people that get all these 100,000 views, all this, it's within the first 48 hours with some straggling along afterwards. So to get it reviewed and, and, and see if you, maybe you can get remonetized if it was flagged in error can take up to seven days. Well, by then, you've lost any money that you would have made. You've lost any money you sunk into a video. And, and some YouTube creators put a lot of hours a lot of time, a lot of money into making this content in hopes that they make not only just make it back, but make a profit. So now when it gets demonetized, they've lost. They've lost money big. Some of the bigger ones have branched out and they can absorb it easier. But if you're a medium to smaller YouTuber that's trying to make it, that can be crushing. Um, luckily for me, if I get flagged or not, I, I, this is not my primary job. It's a hobby. Trying to make it on YouTube, but... I'll still eat, so it's it's not going to kill me, but it's crushing a lot of people and being very disheartening, especially um, when you follow the guidelines and they say, okay, well, it's flagged. Maybe something's in your tags. Maybe something that they don't want. Shooters, uh, violent games, you know, swear words, adult content or non-family content. Okay, and there's some, you know, YouTubers out there complaining and then showing that they got flagged and then you see some of the headlines, you know, their titles to their videos or the content and it touches on some really nasty subjects and I could say you got flagged yeah no shit so there's a few bigger uh, youtubers that I'm, I'm not surprised get flagged but there's a lot of smaller youtubers that are trying to follow all the guidelines and they're mysteriously getting flagged and don't know why immortal John Hancock that's about as PC as you're gonna get uh, woods uh, there's a whole bunch of guys that are getting flagged that it's just like um, why they're following the guidelines they're you know woods does Nintendo-based stuff, so there's nothing real nasty, no shooters, nothing adult, not, not even violent video games. Uh, Mortal John Hancock pretty much focuses a lot on retro, and my kids can watch his videos. I, I never see any swears, any nasty stuff, but yet they got nailed. Uh, I mean, they were also able to reverse a lot of it, you know, and, and go through the process, which is good. I mean, at least YouTube has provided, you know, hey, you just got demonetized here. You can appeal. At least there's an appeal process, but... The time it takes, it could be up to seven days. After that, you've lost out. I mean, especially if it re if it keeps flagging you again and again. The problem is, is this this algorithm is, is not just flagging the nasty stuff. It's flagging. I don't think it's working right. It's just kind of flagging everybody. A little over here, the little there. I see some content that's sneaking through without getting flagged. That's like, wow, that that, that should be banned. And then some stuff that gets flagged. I'm like, it, it, it's kid friendly. And um, so, I mean, there's definitely some work YouTube has to do with it. But in a way, I also blame the advertisers. I mean, they're doing a big knee-jerk reaction to pull out entirely instead of saying, hey, we're going to leave. We, we need to get this fixed. Or, okay, we're coming back, but here's some guidelines. We don't want the extremist stuff. Now they're even blocking stuff that's teen video games and above. I, I think they just don't want video games at all on YouTube, uh, the advertisers. But they're, they're you know, no teen and above now. And they're just basically now, the they're you know, if an advertiser just doesn't like you, you can pull the ads off and you get demonetized, flagged, whatever. You know, they just decide, you know what? I don't like that game. You don't know why. And you're, you're, you're flagged, you're demonetized. And that's shitty. I mean, there should be some rhyme or reason. And I also think that these companies being really, you know, they're being hypocrites, these advertisers. I mean, we only want family friendly. We don't want any of that violence, those video games. But we're going to pay big bucks to put our ads on fucking HBO, you know, Showtime, you know, next to shows like CSI, dealing with murder, rape, and everything else. I mean, it's, it's okay, you, you know, in, in TV, correct me if I'm wrong, I, mean, I could be wrong on this, but I don't think there's any real definite way to see exactly how many people are watching your show. I mean, you got the ratings, you got kind of a ballpark, but I don't know of any exact way to say, yep, yep, they're tuning in, that person, yep, that, yep, they're all turning in. They've saw, seen that ad. However, with YouTube, it's targeted. I mean, you're on you're online. You sign up with your account. You sit there and can every time you view, Google tracks it. It says, okay, this many people saw this video, saw this ad, to the person. This you know exactly what you're going to get. If you pay for an ad and you want to hit this many people, it's hitting that. 
You can tell. You can prove it. So I would think as many people use YouTube, which is millions around the world, and as many content creators, you'd want to actually try to come to a, a you know middle ground, an agreement. So, but they're really not. They're just basically going this all-out approach. Is you know it's either family friendly, bland, or nothing, and it's punishing some really good content. I mean. There's some games out there. I mean, you know, they're going after anything that's a shooter. Destiny. Well, that's not realistic. I mean, if they want to shy away from, like, something really realistically war and very gory, okay. I still don't agree with it, but okay. But God, Halo's Destiny 2, they're, they're, they're sci-fi. They're sci-fi violence. I mean, it's like, you know, you know, teen ga- they're avoiding teen games. That's practically, I mean, I think, I mean, my kids can view teen games. I mean, the ESP is a little harsh. I mean, there's not a lot of stuff that leaves room for any type of gameplay footage. Um, some people are getting punished, like, say, Boogie2988. I'm a fan of his. He does deal with some touchy subjects, like suicide, but not... He doesn't make fun of it. He doesn't sit there and, and just put any, any, any images or stuff out there to shock or to upset anybody. He discusses certain things to, to help people, and he does a good job at putting stuff out there to help people and reach out and make sure people are getting you know taken care of. I mean, he does some good stuff. And channels that reach out and try to do stuff good for society that address some of these issues, we could use more of them. We don't need to have them pulled off and punished. Um, so, I mean, I think this adpocalypse thing has gone too far. I think we should, hopefully it'll come to a head and should back off a little bit because I mean it's it, otherwise you're gonna have just youtubers leave in droves uh, small channels won't be able to make it there won't be any gaming and gaming is a big part of YouTube and and whether the advertisers like it or not that's who's seeing most of your ads are gamers a lot large part of it and if you piss off <laughs> royally the, you know if everybody on YouTube starts boycotting some of these advertisers the big advertisers that are punishing them yeah, stuff can change I mean it's I think it's it's time to kind of just back off. But, I mean, Google owns YouTube, and they've been getting in trouble, too, a little bit lately. Well, not trouble. I mean, people are accusing them of censoring some content and, and, and blocking individuals and, and lashing out. But, uh, you know, uh, so that's been kind of creeping up on there, too. Haven't done enough research, so I haven't formed a full opinion yet. I mean, it could be um, complaints, you know, conspiracy theory, or it could very well be very legit. Uh, so I haven't looked into that. Um, now, the other thing PewDiePie just got in trouble for, which is not really... Uh, I kind of defended him earlier, saying, well, he was trying to do you know satire, which has been used in the past for good. Um, on live stream, in anger, he used the N-word, which I don't agree with, and that got him in some hot water. <clears throat> now, that's... It's kind of a stupid thing to do. I mean, it, 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 you're you're trying to get rid of this whole racist, anti-Semitic, anti-Nazi image, but you're going to use a word like that. You're going to get right back in the hot water. That was not a good idea. I, I don't think that they should be punished as far as, um, you know, they're, they're trying to, now now the companies that owns the game that he plays, the Firewatch or whatever, are trying to punish him, block all of his content, get him off of YouTube, and then they're trying to go over him legally. They want other companies to do the same. They're trying to just basically destroy them. And I think, you know, well, they're trying to pull now, like, oh, yeah, you you, you can't do that. We're going to punish you for, for using our, our, you know, saying something like that and using our content. But you gave an open license to everybody saying, hey, please, everybody stream our content. Put it online. Make money off it. Cool. Can't really do that now. That's it's it's. I mean, you, you can kick them off and block further content, but, I mean, you should probably give them a warning. Uh, some people probably disagree and say you should just get kicked off entirely. But, I mean, now you're just trying to go after and just get them knocked off of YouTube. You want other companies to go after, possibly legal proceedings for hate speech. It's like, he said the N-word, it's shitty. Uh, nobody really likes that. So I touched on some, you know, crappy stuff. Let's touch on some positive stuff. Uh, we were all upset. Scalper is pretty much beat the shit out of us. One, with getting all these NES mini classics. None of the, you know, very few of us could get one. And I myself was kind of pissed off that scalpers are sitting there selling, you know, tens of them, you know, tons of them, and I couldn't find one. Well, Nintendo has actually, yeah, and I have complained in Nintendo, complained 
that the stock that these these you know constantly coming out with the stuff that everybody wants and then you don't have the stock for it ever. They finally listen to us. The NES, uh, the Super NES Mini Classic that's coming out in September, end of September. Um, you might see short supply initially, but they promise it's going to be a lot bigger numbers. That maybe initially it'll be a shorter supply, but Nintendo is telling everybody don't play more than the MSRP. Don't feed into the scalpers. We're going to get a much bigger supply. No reason to worry. You'll be able to get one. That sounds cool. And you're like, well, Nintendo, you fooled me once. But then Nintendo released another little bag of nugget. Little, little, little nugget here. The NES Mini Classic, which a lot of people failed to get their hands on and a lot of people wanted, is being re-released in 2018 sometime. They're going to start a production of that again. So... Scalpers, right there, scalpers. Right there. Right there. <clears throat> Nintendo, you've come through. That'll end some of my rants about Nintendo for a while. So, yeah, I mean, I am a Nintendo fan, and which is why I sometimes I'm a little harsh on Nintendo. Uh, because I, I want to see them do good and succeed. I, I've been a Nintendo fan since the original NES. Um, wasn't too happy with the Wii U, like most people. Wasn't too happy with the... Uh, the shortages of stuff like some of the Amiibos, but now that they've, you know, they've corrected the Amiibo shortage, they've re-released those. Um, they usually get a few, you know, few releases of, of the really sought after ones. So that scalping market has kind of subsided and, and now we're getting, should get ample SNES classic uh, minis. And now we're going to get another batch of the NES. That is pretty awesome. <clears throat> and also GameStop, who seems to be scalping as well. Suck it. Yeah, yeah. Suck it with your, uh, your your bundles. We're being helpful. No, no, no. Ooh, we magically found this stock we just missed. Oh, here's some expensive bundles, all this shit you don't need. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, where are those, where are those now expensive bundles going to be now? Ha. Huh. And of course, uh, so that, that is my little rant there, but... Along with doing the uh, videos, I've been trying to uh, starting to work on building my own game. I, I've been a gamer for many years, so I'm trying to start kind of eke my way into doing an indie game myself. I'm going to be trying to build an RPG, so I'm playing around right now with storyline, really trying to get the storyline. Uh, not sure about the engine, but I've been tinkering around with for now until I learn the programming better, uh, program side of the house better. Uh, I've been playing with the uh, RPG Maker, so trying to use that, get that really down. There's a you can build a game if you're not a programmer at all, but you can actually really tune it and do a lot better if you do some of the programming, which is kind of cool. So it's a cool tool, and also I've got a uh, related tool to do pixel art, so I'm trying to get into pixel art too. So just kind of starting to slowly eke my mind, and, and this vlogs uh, vlogs are going to kind of uh, also touch on from time to time my progress on that, and see you know, and seeing if I go anywhere with that. Uh, trying, but it, it's not an easy thing to do, that's for sure. Um, especially right now being mainly a one-man show. Um, so as I, as I kind of eke along there and, and, and discover things, I'll share that. Um, <laughs> it, it's kind of a, it, it's, it's definitely a tough thing to get into game development. Um, I could do some programming. I'm not a master programmer, but I can do some of the programming. Um, I'm not an animator. I'm not super artistic. So the pixel art I'm just getting into and tinkering with, it's, it's, it's a challenge for me. Uh, I know some guys that are really, really good at it can do some cool pixel art. And I'm slowly but surely trying to learn a little bit. Um, I mean, obviously, when I get going a little bit, I'm going to have to, um, you know, uh, reach out and get some other people involved. I have no musical talent, so I'll be definitely reaching out to some, you know, people I know for that. Um, if, if I really try to do too much custom art, I'll probably try to reach out to some friends that are into that. Um, so I'm just kind of slowly coming through. I mean, it can also be expensive. I mean, I had to sink in some money to programs. Um, you know, I've got some, you know, programming books and game tutorials and, and books on how to kind of start and getting into it. Um, so, and it, and it takes a lot of time trying to get the storyline right and have people read over and say, oh, that, that, that's pretty cool. Or that makes sense. Or no, no, that doesn't make sense. Or how, how'd you go from A to B or, or, or this makes no sense or you're floundering. So I've, I've, it, slowly I'm making a little headway. Um, so I'm trying to mix and match a couple uh, theologies in it, and, you know, 
and make it a neat little um, um, modern meets kind of medieval style RPG. I mean, it'll be more on that later. It'll make more sense later when I uh, as, as I get into and divul divulge more details. So it, it's uh, definitely going to be a work in progress. Uh, so I think that's, that'll be fun to do. Um, so I've always dreamed of it, always wanted to do it, and so now I'm kind of just kind of chip away at it. Um, eventually when I get enough of it done where it actually I've got something like, say, a playable demo, uh, may try to do a Kickstarter. I'll probably try to greenlight and put it on Steam. Um, that's kind of the goals, the thoughts where I'm going with. I mean, how much degree of success I'll have, it remains to be seen. Um, how fast I make progress, that remains to be seen. But... I think it'll be a neat uh, kind of my uh, trial and error here. It might be a little neat thing to put on the in the vlog uh, for everybody to see. Just just my perspective to see. You know, maybe, maybe I'll fall flat on my face and fail entirely. Maybe I'll actually make it. Maybe it'll be some somewhere in the middle. But still, I think it'll be cool to just see. You know, where I go with that. Um, so that's that's kind of where I'm doing that. I'm going to be working on uh, as I'm getting tired here. I'm also going to be working on uh, getting my game capture and beating that uh, East 8 game so I can do a review of a, of, of a really tasty beer that I grabbed up recently. I'm going to be doing that and uh, East 8. Uh, I found a Hefeweizen made with raspberry flavoring. So, ooh, that, that'll be fun. Uh, I, re I really love Hefeweizens, but uh, so that'll, be, that'll be really fun to do. Another thing I might uh, put in my vlog is... Um, Kind of just my uh, my game collecting, my retro game collecting, and, and even current day game collecting. As I ha make some really cool finds, I might try to um, pop those in. For instance, I just picked up a, uh, it's not the best condition, but it's one of the Game Boy uh, Pokemon gold and silverish uh, special edition Game Boys with the uh, Pikachu Ratchu there on there. So that was a neat little find that I came across. We'll also come across um, uh, another game I was going to try playing out is Maniac Mansion. I think I'm going to do a few um, older retro games like along the lines of Maniac Mansion Castlevania for um, around the Halloween time, for October. I th I'm thinking of doing, really doing some of that stuff. Um, not going to go for full-on horror movies cause, or, or full-on horror games because... YouTube's algorithm's targeting and knocking those out big time. And, and I'm a huge fan of horror. And that kind of bums me out that I can't really do that without being punished by YouTube and, and the advertisers. But, I don't know, maybe I'll just do one unmonetized and just throw one up there that uh, I play around with some uh, some horror stuff and, and just can be just unmonetized, just not even bother to do it from the beginning with and just put it up uh, for funsies. So that, that might be cool. But uh, I haven't decided yet. And that was my first uh, vlog, episode one. I uh, hope everybody liked it. Um, Going to be trying to tinker around with this a little bit. Um, let me know what you think. If I should do the uh, Halloween type style of videos, uh, please like and subscribe if you liked it. Uh, please give me some feedback. That's always appreciative. And uh, as always, prost!